G'day everyone, how's it going? Coming from the studio today and got the old 5D Mark IV, the beast of a camera. Uh, love this camera. You guys, if you haven't seen my video yet on the 5D Mark IV and the 10 reasons why I love it, uh, I'll link it above. It's had 30,000 views and lots of great comments, lots of great feedback. And uh, you know, this camera is awesome. Currently there's a special on at the moment on Amazon. The camera is only 3099 for the body. So I would encourage you, I'll put the link below. Full disclosure on the links, everybody. I get a little bit of a kickback from anything you click below. Uh, but basically, it doesn't cost you any more to click the links below. And you can jump right through to the camera page on Amazon. And you can pick it up for 3099 at the moment, which is a really great price. Now, sometimes you might be in a scenario where you're shooting inside and outside, or you're going from a shadowy area, turning around and shooting into the sun. And basically, the auto ISO function means that you can set uh, everything else. You can set your shutter, you can set your frame rate, you can set the aperture that you want to shoot in to get that low depth of field, and you can have your ISO. Uh, auto go from you know 100 ISO for the light areas and then open right up to like 1200 ISO for the darker scenes. So I want to show you how you can achieve that with the Canon 5D Mark IV. So let's jump right in. All right, so here we are at the back of the camera, guys. And basically, what um, I'll just scroll through here to the first camera setting here. So what we want to do is we want to set the camera up. So first things first, I'll just set the camera up safe for shooting a vlog, which will be in 25 frames per second. So I'll just get out of the menu and I'll get into the display here. So we're shooting in 25 frames a second. That's great. And we've got standard picture profile. Awesome. 50 shutter because I want double the frame rate for the shutter and 1.8 aperture, which I'm happy with that. Uh, so I just flick that back to 50. Cool, 1.8 aperture, 100 ISO. That's awesome. Now, actually what I want to do is I want the ISO to be auto, but the problem is I set it to auto and then what will happen is the exposure will compensate correctly and set correctly and I've got this little exposure compensation I can use as well if I want to drop it down or bring it up a little bit uh, on the fly. So the issue right now is that if the ISO, uh, if we go in a really dark space, the ISO will just blow right up and it will cause grainy footage and a grainy image and it won't be what we want. So we actually want to restrict the ISO. So that's where this becomes a game changer because we can actually do that pretty easily. So just by going into menu, I've actually got to find where it is. Uh, ISO speed settings, here we go. So it's the second menu on the um, camera settings, the red camera setting in the menu. And we basically want to get a range for movies. So we can set a range for 4K, which is also good. So we don't introduce as much grain, we can restrict the 4K, but we can set a range for movies as well. So let's say we want to go 100 minimum, that's fine for the minimum and maximum. I don't really like high ISOs, I hate high ISOs, I don't like grain introduced at all. So maybe 3200 would be a good minimum to go there. So then 1000 to 3200 is what I've got it set to. So then when my ISO is on auto, let's say this image darkens or gets brighter, it'll automatically, there you go, you've just seen it automatically. Let me turn on the autofocus here. So automatically you can see the lighting adjusts to my hand in frame. There's my hand. And then you can see when I move my hand away, the ISO auto adjusts. Now there is a really cool thing I'll just show you before I finish is basically we're in this shot and let's say I want to lock down my ISO and I don't want it to change or shift. You know, if I put my hand in front, you can see the ISO has dropped down to 160. And if I take my hand away, you can see here uh, the ISO, you know, has then has, you know, moved up to um, whatever it is. Let's have a look on auto. So it's 160. So if we put it back to auto, then it brings the ISO up. So what I can show you here though is there's one button here, which is the ISO button. So I can basically in one click while I'm shooting, I don't have to come to the back of the screen, but on the top here, I can just click the second button, which is the ISO button. And then I can just flick it across one to 100. So now I've locked down my ISO to 100. And then if I want to go back to auto, I just flick it back to auto. 
So that's a real game changer because that means that you know I can I can lock in my aperture with these settings or I can unlock it and put it into auto. It's really awesome because you can shoot with an auto exposure kind of um, arrangement with the camera, but your frame rate is locked into 25 or 50, whatever you're shooting in, and your uh, shutter speed is locked in as well to get that film look, and also you are locking out your aperture, so you can get that depth of field that you want. So you get everything cinematic, but you're allowing the ISO to adjust the light for you. Now, the ISO is not perfect above 6,000. There is some grain introduced, but as you go and shoot those uh, scenes, you can just denoise that later, and so it's still fantastic. So hopefully you guys got something out of that. Again, the camera I'll link to below. Uh, if you want to pick up one of these, the body at the moment, as I said, is $3,099 US dollars. So make sure if you're in the market for this, pick it up through my links and it'll just help as I'm giving back this content and it'll just help me to continue to make videos like this. Guys, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and give it a thumbs up as well. There'll be more content like this coming out really, really soon. Thanks so much for watching everybody and we'll see you in the next video.